Hey everyone, Aesops here. Today I want to give you an update on the massive Rona network hack and explain to you why you might be left with Monopoly money. Let's get into it. The way the bridge works is that these tokens can't actually leave the Ethereum network. What happens instead is that you receive an IOU slip in exchange for your money. Let's give an example and pretend that this $1 bill is one ETH, okay? What happens in this example is I give you a piece of paper that says that I owe you one ETH in the future. So you give me a dollar bill, I'm gonna keep this dollar bill safe. You in exchange get this piece of paper that says it's redeemable for one ETH in the future. This makes total sense. You can come back to me, give me this piece of paper back, and I'll give you back your dollar. The issue here is that all the dollars that back these pieces of paper are now gone. So basically you're left with a piece of paper that says I owe you a dollar, but I don't have a dollar anymore. It'd be like me storing a bunch of these dollar bills under my mattress, but then somebody breaks in, robs my house, and takes all the dollar bills under my mattress. If you come to me with this piece of paper, I can't give you your money back because I don't have it anymore. That's exactly what happened with the Ronin hack when it comes to wrapped Ethereum or Ethereum in USDC. Let me actually show you guys what I was talking about. So here is the Ronin bridge that I'm showing you guys right here. This is like the mattress where all the money is supposed to be stored and kept for you to be able to come in the future and exchange your slips for actual value. And as you can see here, the problem that we have is that there's only 465 ETH in this wallet. There's supposed to be a lot more than that. You can actually see the tokens right here of what's actually in this wallet. What's actually supposed to be in here is what I'll show you guys right now. So the amount that's actually supposed to be in this wallet is what you guys can see over here when you hop over to the Ronin network. So as you can see here, here's the number of wrapped Ethereum on the Ronin network. Now, what's important to note is that there's actually some of this that is sitting in the contract, and that's just the way that the Ronin network works. It's a little bit complicated, but basically some of this doesn't count. The amount that doesn't count is what is in this Ronin Gateway contract right here. You guys can see this 192,000 ETH. That means that that get the actual amount of ETH that's supposed to be on the network, you would take this 360,000 minus this 192,000. That's how much ETH is actually supposed to be on the network. Once we factor in the hack and what's currently there, you get about that amount. So essentially, we just have wrapped ETH in our Ronin wallets that isn't actually backed by any Ethereum. It's a piece of paper. Luckily, we did get an update from Psycho. It has a little bit of information to the situation. They're working very hard to get the money restored and working with law enforcement and some investigators to try and figure out who this person was who stole the money and hopefully be able to get the money back. This was a social engineering attack combined with human error from December 2021. You guys might be wondering, what is he talking about December 2021? Let me show you. Okay, so back in November, Sky Mavis actually requested help from the Axie DAO to be able to provide free transactions for the large number of growing player base that we had back at that time. The Axie DAO basically gives Sky Mavis permission to sign on their behalf. Now, this was actually supposed to be removed because this was discontinued in December 21. However, this allow less access was never revoked, which means that Sky Mavis still had permission to sign on the behalf of the Axie DAO. This gave them five out of the nine validators needed to be able to override the whole network, and that's where this whole hack came in. That's where you guys can see right here them talking about the five out of the nine Ronin validators needed. This social engineering hack basically means that somebody was tricked into giving over the information needed for the hacker to take over. This does raise the question as to why one person had access to all four nodes, given that it is a large chunk of the network's validators, as well as how did they get tricked? How did this get past security? There's a couple of questions here that I hope we get answered. Just to give you a little bit more information on what social engineering tactics are, Here's a couple of examples to be wary about yourself because some of these can get very complex and intricate that make it almost impossible to actually detect. So let's say you get a strange message from your friend asking you to do something that doesn't make sense. Well, maybe they actually hijacked your friend's email or Twitter account or something along those lines. A lot of these times they also play upon the concept that it's something urgent that needs to get taken care of right away. That way you don't have the time to validate and verify that this person is truly who they claim to be. Another really common one is receiving help that you didn't ask for. Let me actually show you an example of that on Twitter. So here's a person funny enough actually responding to a uh, crypto king here uh, saying that the Ronin got hacked. What happens that these bot accounts end up spamming them saying, I know somebody who can help you get your information back. But here's an example. Try contacting this random person on Instagram for help. Hi, send me a DM. I can help you fix it. Do not fall for this, guys. This is a scam. Do not reach out to these people. What can actually be done about this hack? And we have three options here that I put together to present you guys. There's a couple other ideas out there as well, but here's the three that I like the most. The first one obviously is that this hacker, and here's actually their address where you guys can track and see the amount of money that they hacked and see what they do with that. The most ideal situation is that this hacker actually returns all the money that they stole 
maybe there's some kind of 5 10% fee that they get to keep, and we get all the rest back. This is the most ideal because it's going to cause the minimum impact to the token prices. It's going to go somewhat quickly, and it's going to go without as much pain as some of these other alternative options. Another option is that SkyMavis could actually use some of the funds they've raised before, as well as their token allocation, to be able to pay off the amount without having to raise equity or debt. And as you guys can see here, I modeled that this would actually have a significant impact on the price. Of course, we don't know what will actually happen, but given the fact that based on their allocation schedule, right now they have about 15% of the total supply of AXS, that's going to cause a lot of selling pressure on the token, especially if they try and get this done really quickly. So that could push the price down dramatically in the short term. That would be an artificial push down that could return in the future. So that's something important to consider. SkyMavis then also did a $150 million fundraising round last year. This is something that they could tap into. Again, we don't know how much of this they've spent. We don't know how much of their AXS token allocation they've spent. There's a lot of unknown here, but they do have a couple of these possibilities that they could tap into. The biggest positive here is that these tokens could actually get sold pretty quickly and we could see the network back up in as short as a few days or maybe even two weeks if they wanna try and minimize the price impact a little bit. These allocation schedules, by the way, are available to you on the Axie Infinity white paper. You can see that here. You can see how much goes to Sky Mavis. Right now we are in, as you guys can see right here, we're in month 15. And if we go over for the team, they've unlocked these two sets of AXS token allocations. Similar story for Ron, you can actually go here, click on the spreadsheet that's going to pull up over here, and you can see all the information for their Ron token allocation schedule as well. Now, the third main option I could come up with, and honestly, the least ideal of the three options, is that Sky Mavis actually goes ahead and does another round. They could do another round for, say, $600 million, dilute their equity in Sky Mavis, uh, but be able to get the money that they need back to the player. Based on their previous valuation, about $3 billion, if they could actually continue that valuation and raise the $600 million, they would be only giving up about 20% of Sky Mavis. Now the downside to this is that this could take a while to actually go around to a couple different VC funds, pitch them, provide the information, as well as the idea that some of the numbers just don't look as good as when they raised the money previously. This was basically towards the peak of Axie Infinity. It was great times, numbers were looking great, growth was looking outstanding, things were looking good overall, so they were able to get really high valuation. However, things have changed. For example, player base, we've gone from a peak of about 2.7 million daily active users. Right now, we're just under 1.5 million. This is a pretty big loss of about 45% of the daily active users. There are also a couple other factors such as market volume decline, some things like that, that means that SkyMavis might get less favorable term. Maybe they'll get a $2 billion valuation instead of a three. I don't know how that'll all work out and hopefully we don't have to find out. Some good news though, is that Binance is open for scholars to go in and sell their SLP as well as people will be able to go in and sell their AXS. So this is great news for the players who hold those two tokens. Right now, as it stands, anybody who still holds wrapped Ethereum or USDC currently is holding monopoly money. Money that just isn't really backed by anything. It really technically isn't worth anything at the time. And there's obviously, as we've gone through some ways that it could be worth something in the future. So let's hope that one of those options happens. We're able to get the $600 million back and people are able to continue on their way and not have Monopoly money, instead have the real thing. That's all I got for you guys today. Let me know in the comments down below if you hold wrapped Ethereum or USDC and you currently have your money hacked and stolen from you. I hope we can get it all recovered and I hope things can move forward positively. 